everybody, I'm Amy for anyone that doesn't know and in today's video I am drawing a kingfisher in coloured pencils and I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. So firstly I'm starting by blocking in the darkest areas on the kingfisher and to do that I'm using the black pencil and I've made sure that it is nice and sharp prior to starting this piece. So it's really important that you get your pencil nice and sharp so that you can get into all of the little details because if you're using blunt pencils then it will be really difficult to do that. So I would actually like to really recommend the Superpoint Manual Sharpener by Derwent which is a helical desktop sharpener and this sharpener is amazing because you put the pencil in the sharpener and turn a crank and the blades go round the pencil so you don't actually sharpen them manually with your hands. So when I was working on the beak of the bird I was also mainly using the side of my pencil when I was applying layers of pencil down and I do this for two reasons. Firstly, by using the side of the pencil, it means that I can cover a lot more of the tooth of the paper than I would by just using the tip of the pencil. But also because if you use the point of the pencil to put colour down onto the paper, you risk applying too much pressure early on. So you only want to apply a lot of pressure down onto your pencil and paper when you're ready to burnish an area. And what I mean by that is basically smoothing all the areas out and getting rid of the white paper grain by applying a lot of pressure. So going back to my drawing now and as you can see I'm working on the top part of the kingfisher's head and this is something that I've always struggled with as kingfishers have such stunning patterns and details in their feathers. So above their heads they tend to have a really beautiful pattern in the feathers and the best way I can describe it is almost like a zigzag or zebra pattern. So right now what I want to do is focus on getting in all of that lovely detail. Near the kingfisher's eye there were quite a lot of orange tones and kingfishers are known for their striking colours, particularly the blues and oranges in their feathers. So if you're going to study a kingfisher I would definitely say that it's really important that you spend some time looking at your reference photo to see what sort of colours and tones you can see in their feathers. So this reference photo is amazing because it is of such an up close shot of this kingfisher. You can clearly see every detail in the kingfisher and I actually downloaded this site from a royalty free site called Pixabay. So Pixabay is obviously a royalty free site for uploading and downloading images and there are thousands of images on there that have been uploaded free for commercial use from people all over the world. So that means that you can download those images from that site. So please go and check Pixabay out if you would like to see more images that you can use for royalty free. So now what I'm going to talk about is what sort of techniques I'm using for this drawing and why. So for this drawing I am using the layering and burnishing method and what I mean by that is I am using a lot of coloured pencils and adding various amounts of pressure to add in all of the little details that I need to. So for example with the kingfisher's head I'm using the black pencil to just lightly block in all of those patterns on the kingfisher's head and then I'm going to add several layers of coloured pencils using mainly blue tones actually to add in all the details. So I'm starting by applying a light layer of blue pencils and I'm using some of the grey blues and light blues for the base layer or undertones and then building up on those layers for the mid-tones I am using some turquoise blue, cobalt blue and phalo blue as well and these are all from the Caran d'Arche luminance range. For the darkest parts of this part of the head I'm using a lot of the dark blue to highlight this area and one colour I am using for this part is the Prussian blue which is like a really nice navy royal blue. With the feathers themselves on top of the kingfisher's head the feathers are very short and clustered together almost in clumps and I personally love drawing feathers and fur like this. It sort of reminds me of a cat or dog's fur and I actually find these types of feathers much easier to draw than say a wing of a bird. So when you are drawing feathers like this to make it a lot easier for you I would recommend just really analysing the feathers to try and ask yourself a few questions like what type of feathers is it? Are the feathers clumped together? Are they short or long feathers? What direction are they going in? Are the feathers making any shapes or patterns? And what colour or shades can I see in the feathers? So if you ask yourself questions like this, then that will really help you to break everything down and make it a lot easier for you to understand how to draw feathers. Another tip I have when drawing feathers and especially on a bird like this where there are a lot of feathers is to really draw those feathers in stages. 
So drawing feathers like this can be really repetitive because there are so many feathers to draw and also you are having to draw a whole bird. So one way to make it easier for you is to try and work in stages or sections. So maybe just start by working on the face of the bird one day and then working on a few feathers the next day and just spread your drawing process out. So this kingfisher took me around 12 to 14 hours to complete so there's no way that I would be there sitting all of that time drawing. I actually completed this in around four days so I did about four hours of work each day and that really helped me. So I know it can be a little bit frustrating to work on one piece for so long but you really don't want to rush your drawing process because you could spoil the drawing. Also with feathers, I've made the mistake myself before where I've not taken my time with a drawing and some of the feathers of the bird looked more like scales and it really was because I was rushing and just not paying attention. So definitely give yourself a break. Now if you are someone who happens to love sitting down for long durations of time or perhaps you are really experienced in drawing feathers, then it might not work for you with doing the actual stages. But if you feel like you need to just work on one feather at a time, then you need to just do what makes you feel comfortable. So in terms of picking colours for a drawing, I've mentioned this briefly in other tutorial videos, but one way that really helps me to pick out colours for a drawing is by printing off a reference photo and holding coloured pencils I think will be a close match up against certain areas of the image. You could also use colour swatches with all of your pencils and hold the swatches up against your image to see what pencils will work best for your drawing. So when I was looking at the image of the kingfisher, I was really looking to see what sort of colours there were on the bird and I could see a lot of blues, oranges, yellows, greys and creamy tones. So I think in total I used around 25 pencils for this drawing so it is surprising how many different colours and shades can be in just one drawing or one animal, whatever the subject is. So going back to the kingfisher now and all I am doing here is using a lot of the blue tones on the feathers. So for this part I'm using the grey blue, light blue, turquoise blue, cobalt blue and also some of the Prussian blue as well. And all I am doing is just focusing on adding in some of the feather strokes and also a lot of the shading as well. So I'm sort of building up on a lot of layers with the pencils and just making sure that I get in a lot of the very fine details as well as some shading, tone, contrast and depth. So the coloured pencils I am using for this piece, as I've just said, are the Caran d'Arc Luminance pencils and they are a wax based pencil but if you wanted a cheaper alternative to these pencils then you can also use the Prismacolor Premier pencils which are also wax based. So I like wax based pencils because they have such a soft lead and I like how they blend together so that means that you can get a lot of really nice shades and tones in your drawing. However, the one downside to wax based pencils is that because of their soft lead it can be a bit difficult sometimes to really add fine details in. So I'm actually starting to use the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils for animal drawings more. The Polychromos pencils are an oil-based pencil so they are very similar to wax-based pencils but they do have a slightly tougher lead so they can really get in the fine details. So working on the back of the kingfisher now and again really I am just using the same techniques for this part so layering with light tones, mid tones, dark tones and then burnishing the colours together and like I said because these are a wax based pencil they just blend so smoothly. So very shortly I'm going to be working on the tip of the wing and I do actually find this part of birds very tricky to do because of the shape of the wing. So for the bottom part of the wing the colours actually start to transition from a really rich blue colour to quite soft blues going into grey tones. So some of the grey tones I used were the light grey, slate grey, warm grey and paint grey, again all from the luminance set. And I blended a lot of the grey tones in with the blue tones to create a soft and easy transition effect between the two areas of the bird. I'm also using the buff titanium and the white pencil to really pull up some highlights on the bird because as I said the back part of the bird actually becomes a lot lighter than the top part of the bird. So I'm using more of the buff titanium which is an off-white colour almost like a very light cream colour and the white pencil to burnish these areas of the bird. So overall at this stage I'm fairly happy with how this drawing is turning out and I'm almost finished with the blue feathers on the bird and just the blue feathers alone took me hours to do. So as I said just be mindful of how much time it's going to take you to complete a drawing when you're using coloured pencils. 
So I think for me, I always struggle with the wing of a bird, like I said, but also I found it really challenging drawing claws and branches and also tree stumps. So I have to admit, I did find that part difficult when I started to do that a bit later on. So if you are someone who is trying to improve your skills and is really practicing drawing, then I would say that even if you make some mistakes, it's always a good thing to look back on that and grow from it. And also this is part of the reason why I enjoy doing tutorials and why I like to include bits of advice that I have got from my own experiences because I feel that it's also really important for teaching purposes. So I hope that by me just highlighting some of the mistakes and weaknesses will help other people to see that this is just a part of getting better as an artist. And this actually does just about finish off this tutorial now and I really hope that you enjoyed this video and got lots of helpful tips and advice from this video. Like I said, I try and create these tutorials not only talking about my processes and what I'm doing but also offering advice to tackle certain issues because I feel that that is also just as important than just saying what I'm doing and not really explaining why I'm doing it. So as I said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I do actually have a full list of all the materials and products I use for this video as well as all the information for my social media accounts as well. But anyway guys, that just about finishes off this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. I upload art related videos three times a week and I have a list of all of the materials, products and equipment that I use in the description box down below. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye everyone.